Hello everyone, I am Prasad from Structural Guide. Today we are going to discuss about construction of parapet poles. How do you do the construction of a parapet pole correctly? What happens if you are not doing the construction correctly? So what are the consequences? How do you rectify all those? We will be discussed today. Let's start the video. So what is the parapet pole? Parapet pole is a kind of a wall built on a roof terrace. Or at the end, at at the edge of the roof terrace. So at the at the edge of the roof roof terrace, we build the parapet floor. When you have a roof terrace, you need protection. So when you need a protection, we build a wall. In addition to that, there may be some other protection like glass walls or any other thing also there. So but when you have a, a roof terrace or balcony, the most easiest way to construct the protection around that is the parapet wall. It is pretty economical and a solid thing. So this is the parapet wall. So today we are going to see what are the main key aspects of this construction and what are the facts that we need to consider. So let's start with the waterproofing. Now when you do the waterproofing, we have to place the waterproofing sheet or membrane along this and you have to protect something like this. So what if happen the waterproofing is fail. So if you know the waterproofing is warranty is provided about 10 years maybe. Right. So after 10 years what happened? Really? Or oh, sometimes you might not do the waterproofing. What happened? So water gonna leak. So you can see here there is a joint. So this is concrete, this is brick. These two are two different material, then due to the thermal expansions and contractions this joint would leak the water so through this joint the water will lead to the outside you have seen white color things in this concrete surfaces that is that is a kind of indication of the leaking of water so in addition to that you might have seen now let's say I, let me draw a, a elevation let's say this is your slab you have a brick wall like this you have a brick wall like this this is our parapet wall you might have seen cracks like this you have, might have seen cracks like this you might have seen crack like this right and then cracks maybe right what is the reason for this you know during the daytime the temperature will increase so what happened is due to the temperature rise so this material expands in night, due to the temperature is lowering, the material gets shrink. In addition to that, since there is a two material, this is concrete and this is brick or block, so the properties are not the same. So due to that also, there will be a different stresses dual. So in addition to that, you can see here, this top surface is free. You don't have any restraint there. But when you see this joint or Alone this joint, the brick wall cannot move freely. That's the reason I mentioned previously there will be additional stressors here. So this movement of the brick wall, this movement of the brick wall is restrained. Movement of the brick wall is restrained by the concrete. So there will be restraint here. So due to those reasons, there will be cracks. So once this cracks appears, it's very difficult to repair. Why? Because you know you can repair this anyway. You can fill the crack with the construction without or oh, epoxy material, then you can seal it. But what happens is with the time again it may be not the same location, there may be a cracks in the other location because in naturally when there are stressors, so those has to be bared by somebody. So if the brick cannot bear it, what it does is it's crack. So one is when it cracks it have a space to shrink expand so it that's what naturally happens so we can't control that but if you have some element to take up these stressors then those cracks can be avoided let's see what are the correct practices of the construction of the parapet port let's begin with the foundation of the parapet port now you know we just as you can see here we have just construct the parapet wall on the concrete but can we do it no you cannot what's the correct practice then right let's me draw it so 
you have a slab like this so what we have to do is we have to cast a concrete curb here you have to cast concrete curb here so then you can do the waterproofing here because now when you fill water here if you fill the water due to the rain or something water can't leak now here you, you don't have a joint there and also you have a concrete there so water won't be leaking to the outside so that's one kind of a protection so again when water fill there this board brick wall won't get damp so due to the damp of so the brick wall the your paints and all that will be damaged or won't last long so therefore uh, having this concrete here will have uh, many benefits so you can do the waterproofing and all that correctly then you can build your block wall or brick wall on the top of that i must say that now when you construct in the parapet wall you might do the concrete as well to the wall construction but when it comes to the cost or economy it might not be possible to you to use for the concreting always but when you when when there are key elements we might in a big project you might do it with the concrete but mostly we do it brick or block if you do it concrete you have to spend for the concrete and also for the reinforcement there are the considerable cost when compared to the brick mostly right let's come to this point now you can cast the curve there and you can cast the block wall or brick wall on the top of that then there won't be issue here the water leaking and all that won't happen right then what happened now you can see here i as i explained there may be cracks like this how do we control this let me draw this elevation here right so your elevation will be like this your slab will be like this the slab is here right your curb will be like this right but how do we control this cracks here what we do is during the construction so it is depend on the height you have to consider that height you place a concrete stiffener beam here you construct a stiffener beam here now you can see here you have a curb here and you have a stiffener beam at the top so you have a stiffener beam at the top here you have a curb right now concrete stiffener beam there you have a curb there then water leaky doesn't happen these type of cracks now this there is a beam there when it's try to expand this concrete beam can carry this because this is reinforced concrete beam it can carry the tension so when you have a tension cracks like this those can be controlled with this stiffener beam now what if there are cracks in like this as you said as we explained there will be cracks like this can we control by this beam no you can't so what we have to do is we have to construct the stiffener columns like this we have to construct or you have to cast stiffener columns in between curb and this is stiffener beam you have to cast concrete columns like this in the regular space generally this spacing would keep at about 3 meters the preferred spacing you might you might uh, 3 meters you might reduce if required also you can can increase but it's not effective if you increase in the column because if there is a increase this area will be high then due to thermal action again there may be cracks so therefore better to have a lesser spacing always even if you can have a spacing like 2.5 meter or 2 meter even it's better but again it will be a costly solution the, that you have to look into when you're doing the construction so at least you better have it by three meter intervals the, these stiffener columns then there it will stop this cracking so now the protections for the cracking is clear now now you can protect this big block wall against cracking so you have a block wall here block wall big wall there so it's protect against cracking now it's protect again Water, water leaking and all that right now let's see what are the reinforcement that we need to put into this kind of a construction right let me draw the again this enlarged view of this this is the stiffener b so i'm not going to draw the big wall there so here you have a curve like this right 
right this is the curve so here so here for the stiffener beam it is good if we can have four and four number of reinforcement bars right and stir up like this so if this wall now you know the width of the parapet wall matters in this case so if this parapet wall has a width about 2 to 5 2 to 5 millimeters you can easily cast this kind of a beam okay you can cast easily this kind of a beam like maybe maybe 200 or maybe 175 is also okay or you can have it 2 to 5 so this kind of a beam can be cast there if you have a width like this but it might be difficult now your wall may be 150 millimeters what we can do for this beam what we can do is now when you when you with this reduce you might not be able to put a lot of reinforcement so you might not be able to have a large cover as well so you need to have consider how also you can do two things what we can do is we can do two number of bars there like this and you can have a a slink like this now in these cases this reinforcement now mostly the link you might go with r6 right for the reinforcement you might at least put p10 or t8 you might put or if you if you can if you are capable of investing you can use even t12 one of these reinforcement would be adequate for uh, this kind of a situation this is not the structural case but this is service condition but you know when you have a smaller diameter then the yielding may occur then the movement will be there there may be a chance of cracking cracking but therefore you have to keep in mind that also then you better go with this kind of a reinforcement bar for these cases so still up you might go with this side option and also we might go with the four numbers or two number of bars depending on this with requirement right now it's fine so here what we can do is we have a two option for the curve what we can do is first option what we can do is we can continue the slab reinforcement to here something like this but it may be you may be difficult to bend it like this for that case you might put the additional bar like this it's okay now what is this height of this curve this is also important factor that you have to consider now you have to put the angle fillet and do the water proofing like this now thereafter you have a protective screen in very large area if you have a very large area when you have a uh, very large area then those kind of situations you might need to additional fill like this second stage fill might be required to get the water collected into one point so if you want to collect water into one point you might need to have a fill like this in those kind of situations this height will increase but you have to keep in mind that fill height maximum fill height let's say including the tile this fill height shall be kept below this joint so you might have an adequate height there at least 50 millimeter should be there once you drain the water including the water height it might collect that include the water height that may be minimum 50 below the water level max max that it would rise there so in average this gap maximum fill level including the to this joint we could consider as a 100 millimeter scoop if we can have it like this then there will be no risk so that's how we determine the curb height then we have a vertical and horizontal reinforcement should be there so vertical reinforcement we can continue the same with the slab but you need to have a distribution bars here okay horizontal bars we have for what should be provided you better as we discussed we might go with the e10 t8 t12 one of these options you might consider the spacing of the distribution bars if it is better we can have it 150 or otherwise 200 150 is the best but even 200 is okay so these are the spacing of the distribution bars now the curb reinforcement you know how to provide then you know the stiffener beam reinforcement 
and you have a stiffer column here in between the big fields right this is a stiffener column the stiffener column reinforcement arrangement you consider the same as the stiffener beam so for reinforcement or two bars as required as depending on the your width of the wall so it's if it is smaller providing uh, four number of bars will be difficult because you have to maintain the cover to the reinforcement and all that because if you have not adequate cover there then again this reinforcement will be corroded and deteriorate this concrete will be damaged and will become defective therefore you have to keep in mind to have adequate cover depending on the exposure condition you have to come across therefore at least you might has to have a 25 to 30 mm cover there so considering all those facts you might decide the reinforcement arrangement of the stiffener beam and column now i think it's clear to you what are the best method best practice that you have to consider in construction of the parapet pole so when you construct the parapet pole at the roof slab level you have to have a concrete curve bucket like this now if i brief it so it may be the roof terrace like this so let's say it's the your main building here so you might have a level drop there you have a level drop will be lower drop though here so you curve, construct the curve around this right so match with this level drop you have a curve there then this will become a bucket like this so water won't flow out because of this curve so then you have a pit or drainage arrangement here so you collect the water to soak it to there as the second stage fill as required then you collect the take the water out there then you have the curves then you can put the stiffener columns as required and as we discussed so then you have stiffener columns on the top of that you can put the stiffener beam connecting all the columns then your work is perfectly done that's what uh, we want to discuss today the construction of best, best practices of the construction of the parapet wall i think you need to require to consider in construction of the parapet walls there's a waterproofing stiffener columns stiffener beams and the reinforcement detailing so that's it for today let's meet again for new video thank you very much for watching our videos